Hello and welcome back to Talking Planning. Since moving to Newcastle, I've already reviewed some local buses from Newcastle Transport, Hunter Valley buses and Rover coaches. I've also reviewed the Endeavour Railcar on a trip between Newcastle and Singleton and today, I think it's time to add another transport mode into the mix, so join me for a journey on board Newcastle's light rail network. Like many Australian cities, Newcastle had a tram network through the late 1800s and through the first half of the 20th century, with the final trams operating on the 11th of June 1950. Fortunately, some engineers and planners are beginning to learn why ripping up tram networks after the Second World War was a bad idea, and that just offering a few buses in a now car-dominated city just doesn't cut it. Fortunately though, everything old is new again, and under the guise of light rail, trams return to Newcastle on the 17th of February 2019, after a few years of construction. Up until Christmas Day in 2014, the heavy rail network, that is suburban and intercity trains, ran all the way into the CBD with the former Newcastle station located on the corner of Scott and Watt Streets. After the closure of the line, trains terminated at Hamilton Station and there were shuttle buses from there into the city centre. The light rail network was not without controversy as still many believed that heavy rail was the way to go and at the time of the truncation of the rail network, the light rail project had the go ahead but no detailed design. There were campaigns out there to save our rail, last minute court injunctions and claims about an on-street network being slower and more expensive to build. But fortunately, the tram network went ahead and choosing an on-road design has made vast improvements to the public realm. As a case in point, I'm going to move through four images and I want you to try and spot the signal box in each of them. This is the view from Google Earth in January 2008 where you can see a sea of concrete, and were it not for the mini-map in the left corner, you'd probably have no idea that there was a river beyond the train line. Fast forward to June 2015, the train line was still in place, although trains were no longer running. At least Earth's resolution improved, and I'm glad that Earth has upgraded to 1080p. Moving on to August 2017, the footbridge, train lines and big fences have disappeared, and you can now clearly see the waterfront in the distance. And moving on to September 2020, where you can see the new tram alignment is now completed, there is greenery and the phallic looking tower has been de-erected. Shift your eyes back to the signal box. With the changes in public realm, it's gone from a forgettable operational structure to a lovely cafe and the old rail corridor is now a lovely open green space. And of course, that old heritage terminus station is now open for all to enjoy as a public space, making its heritage and beauty more accessible than ever before. So let's move on to the trams themselves. Newcastle Transport has six of them, each built by CAF and numbered 2151 to 2156. At the time of filming, 2151 is wearing a mask, 2153 advertises PD insurance, and 2155 advertises Greater Bank and the remaining three are ad free. Most of the time, when you think of a tram network, you expect to see overhead wires, like on these Melbourne Z3 class trams, this A class tram, this D class tram, this Bombardier Flexity from the Gold Coast, and this Alstom Cityway from Messina in Sicily. Unlike all of these tram networks, Newcastle's trams store energy in supercapacitors and use flash charging at every stop through a pantograph. Once stopped, the pantograph just goes up and as the tram waits, it's charging up, reducing the visual amenity concerns that many people have with overhead wires. Back to the Signal Box Cafe, its rooftop terrace provides a great location to sit and enjoy a coffee while watching the trams go by. It's also a great vantage point to see how the charging system works in action.
Since we've now seen plenty of the outside of these trams, let's tap on and go for a ride. Inside, these trams have plenty of seating and standing space with nifty little touches throughout the interior. So let's have a bit of a look around. At each end, you'll find these half-sized doors and seats that face towards the driver's compartment. You'll also find these large luggage racks designed to swallow up suitcases. I wonder how often they actually get used, as most of the time I've caught the tram, it's been pretty quiet. Towards the middle of the tram, you'll find sideways facing seating with some flip up spaces where you can park prams, mobility scooters, wheelchairs or shopping trolleys. Near some of the doors, you'll also find surfboard racks like on the Gold Coast trams. These are a neat idea, although I haven't seen anyone bringing a surfboard onto the tram yet. There are straps fitted to help hold them in place. If the tram does manage to fill up, there are hand grips and handrails mounted on the ceilings should you need to stand up. But judging by the patronage on my journeys, it's pretty likely that you'll find a seat with ease. The next stop is Crown Street, then Looking out the window, you can see that the tram travels down the centre of Hunter Street and there's a sense of satisfaction to seeing the reflection of the tram in the shop front windows. From this angle, you can also see the emergency help point and door releases, which are staple features on modern public transport. You may even come across a rhino on board your tram. Be aware of the rhino was a campaign by Newcastle Transport to get people to think about how they behave around trams. Apparently, these trams weigh as much as 30 white rhinos, which is a great fact to whip out at trivia night or to liven the mood while you're on a date. Welcome aboard the next stop is Honeysuckle, then all stops to Newcastle Beach. If you're heading home from said date, and that brilliant fact didn't lighten the mood, Maybe just stick to looking out the window instead. The next stop is then all stops to Newcastle Interchange. At least there are next stop displays inside the tram to remind you of how far away your stop is. And since the network is pretty small, with just six tram stops, your destination should never be too far away. If you're in Newcastle, I definitely recommend giving the tram a try as it is a convenient way to get across the CBD, linking into the train network and connecting buses at Newcastle Interchange. And with that, I think it's time to get off the tram and say thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Yeah.